keep California cowgirls from vanishing. Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Training our horses and miniature cows in ranch versatility. Penny, Rusty and Susie, our bull and heifer. Roping Rusty with Morgan Horse, Sammy. Training Eve to drive cart. Training Eve to work over her haunches with a motor cow simulator. Training Eve to lay down. Training Eve to harness, pull a log. Training Semi to harness, pull a log on turf. Jumping at liberty to music, making our Morgan horses our partners. Training Eve on a cow roping simulator. Training on our driveway, which is covered by sand, so we have a straight track. Stepping over poles, jumping over crossbar jumps. Training in our trail obstacles area. Semi on the big steps. Morgan Horse Sadie doing obstacles rainlessly. Semi drives a cart. Sadie pulls a log. Sadie learns to pull a cart. Miniature Zebu Heifer Susie learns to drive a cart. Bull Rusty learns to pull a harrow. Part two, to shoe or not to shoe, this is Firecrest Easter Eve. Shadrach, Sun and Shine, Sadie's mother, a Morgan mare. Now, she has four Cavallos on. And Lawrence is going to help me decide today whether or not to shoe her at all, to shoe her on two, to shoe her on four. And we'll turn the camera back on after we've taken the Cavallos off. And Lawrence sees why I have Cavallos on. Now, Eve's front hooves don't have any obvious holes in the soles, as far as I know. But one of my border horses got out a week or two ago. She ran around trying to get away from them, and uh, she got pretty chewed up on the edges of her front hooves. That's why I put cavallos on the front. The cavallos were on the back because one of her back hooves does have a hole, and I didn't want her to feel unbalanced, so I put cavallos on both. And we did use a sock all this time, which we changed every day, which we used duct tape to keep up so it didn't slip into the cavallo. We used a sock to try to protect that hole. And so far, Eve's walking on all fours. But Lawrence is now feeling her. Is it too wet, Lawrence? Yeah. Too wet. That's the only problem so far. Actually, her angles look much better than the last one. Um, you know, you don't see the big warp thing. Yes. There's a, there's a little bit of one here, but not anywhere near. Well, her laminatic episode was much longer ago. Yeah. So she's growing out. And nice maybe then. she hasn't continued to do it. I have a feeling the other one was. Yeah. Probably mild enough that you weren't noticing an extreme lameness, but probably that constant kind of tender. Yes. Thing. So now he's hoof testing. If she does start pulling back, I want to make sure she doesn't get any pressure on her halter, so I'm going to loosen this. Ah, a little bit of discomfort yep. pulling back. Not, not as bad as the other girl. Not as yeah, bad as her daughter Sadie. There's a little bit about an inch in front of the frog. Not to the sides of it though, so that's kind of good. Laminitis, if it's going to hit a horse, it usually happens only on the front feet. Yes, it's usually, um, if it continues to happen, sometimes on those little ponies that 
really shouldn't be grazed at all. Um, you'll see it start at the hinds if it if it reoccurs and reoccurs, and finally it will start affecting the hinds. If you remember correctly, last time you had worse bruising, but Sadie was more sensitive anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, like we could be it. She's a little tougher. Yeah. See, nothing on this one. That's very good. Good. So right in the exact no same spot. reaction from That's the left front. Good. That's good news. Now, this is a part three, and you didn't may, maybe didn't see, excuse me, it's part two, and you maybe didn't see part one when we did Sadie, but we do give all my Morgans Hayro daily, which comes delivered for us, and uh, in a wetted beet pulp mix. Um, and that is... Uh, Supposed to help them because they are the old style Morgan. Supposed to help them um, from uh, tending to founder, even though they are grazing on grass. Because I irrigate every single square inch of my property where I can. Okay, it looks like she's got the same kind of angular problem on the front. Okay. Yeah, but it's not as severe. I mean, her her feet are just sturdier and. I'm beginning to think the other one's been having real mild little founder all the way along. This one also looks a tad skinnier. Oh, they've all lost a lot of weight. They're all uh, between eight and nine now. Eat's the one that's dropping the most. Now this is the sock that we took off of her left rear. Uh, you can see, even though she had a cavallo on, the sock is soaked, um, which is not good to have that kind of moisture. Hugging the hoof. And I did oh, notice the koalas, I didn't realize this when you first showed them to me, they have a little vent in the bottom that... Yeah, they do, yeah. so you can walk through a stream on yeah. your trail yeah. ride mm -hmm. and not collect the water. But obviously it's letting the water in. <laughs> Which is the... Try to take care to clean their hooves every day, uh -huh. even though the koalas are off. So Brianna changes these socks every single day. And we clean out the cavallos. They get wet inside. And uh, right now we don't have the pads inside to give frog support, but we do have pads that fit into the cavallos if we need to give frog support. Okay, now Lawrence is just trimming. So we're going to turn the camera off until we have another decision to make or another new fact to show you. Well, so far it looks like uh, Eve's fronts are okay, only too wet, too wet. So um, I don't know what I'm going to do about cavallos or no cavallos. I did buy some hoof socks that didn't last more than a couple days. So we have to decide how we're going to deal with especially her backs. One of her backs has a hole that we may or may not be concerned about um, it getting infected. So you're, you're seeing Lawrence do his usual trim. He has advised me to try to give Eve, maybe overnight, an opportunity in places where there isn't a lot of irrigated grass so that the hooves dry out. And I will keep that in mind and try to organize things for my horses so that they can get what they need day and night. Okay, on the right front, um, Lawrence basically uh, removed the lamina, the soft lamina. We don't have to worry about pebbles getting stuck in her soles. I, I wouldn't say that. I still think we're going to get pebbles. <laughs> What I actually did was remove the hoof wall so the lamina is more exposed. So hopefully they'll fall out on their own. Okay, because it's certainly natural for horses to walk on places where there are little rocks. The question is, are their hooves tough enough so that the rocks don't get embedded in the hoof? Okay, we'll turn the camera back on when we have more to tell you. Okay, the left front was about the same as the right front. We're not too worried about rocks and pebbles getting stuck in her soles, and the angle of her front of her hooves looks good. Thank you. Um, 
So is there a way to put the cavaliers on with anything that would stop them from getting so damp? Not that I know of. Huh. Yeah, that's a problem. Because I think if we, you could dry her out now, she could probably stay barefoot. Okay, so then the question is... Now, even with, obviously, even with pads, liquid gets under the pads. You, yes. you can't ever keep a horse 100% dry. Yes. Um, you, uh, the pads do some, you know, matter from getting underneath, but not liquid. Well, the hoof socks are the only thing, and I would have to buy a bunch of them because they fall apart so fast. Uh -huh. Yeah, we tried layers and pounds of tape on those things and it just No, that, that just around that hairline, that's way too damp. I mean, if yeah, if one of them did refounder right now, it'd, it'd really go fast. I, I've been worrying about that a little bit, but yeah. I've been trying to keep everything dry and, uh -huh. and everything. It's just uh -huh. kind and of like impossible with the Cavallos. She doesn't, she doesn't flinch as easy, you know, yeah, could just exactly. be that she's tougher. <laughs> exactly. I think Sadie's just young and gets no, she gets away with, yeah. you know. Pulling away. And so this is a large hoof sock. This is an extra large. We got an extra large in case we wanted to double up with socks. Uh, the, these hoof socks come with this felt pad and then this rubber pad. This rubber pad got a hole in it the very first time I used it. So uh, the question is how are we going to keep her hooves dry and yet give her uh, protection uh, without chewing her? Turn the camera back on when we have a decision on that matter. Okay, Eve's left rear um, had the hole, so we've been really careful to use socks and duct tape and then in cavallos to protect against. Uh, this is what I was seeing that I like. Is see that flakiness there? Yeah, it's, it's just not a little drier than the fronts were. Yeah. Uh, what's going on back here works a tad better than what was going on with the fronts. I can see that my ancient Singer sewing machine may need to get some work done. It's the only way I can get those socks to put in the Cavallos is to, like uh, I've said before, but maybe not on this tape, is to take two men's socks, cut off the tops, cut down the center of the foot part of the sock, and then sew the center together. And that makes a hoof sock, so to speak, uh, that I can use in the Cavallos. But they get wrecked pretty soon, pretty easily, even if we try to put duct tape around the edges of the hooves, which I don't like to do because duct tape doesn't breathe very well. So you can see now what Lawrence is doing, that it looks healthy. The fronts were much too wet. And again, one small step at a time, we'll make decisions and let you know what they are. Eve doesn't need shoes. We do want her to have a chance to dry out, but we don't want to ask her to walk over rocks or driveway when she doesn't have her cavallos on. So I'm rethinking how I'm going to keep them at night for the next few weeks. Um, it is September. We don't expect rain for another couple months. And um, Lawrence is going to come back down in three or four weeks and make sure that everything looks okay. And of course, we'll be watching for any kind of favoring if it occurs. So that's our decision. Correct, Lawrence? Yes. Okay. Uh, but Lawrence, that hole that was in the back, are you it, concerned about that? It's the same that? as the rest of the lamina. And what I did was I chopped off the hoof at a straight down angle. So that lamina is actually more exposed to the air. Okay. So if you can keep her semi-dry, I mean, you can't keep it 100%, I know. But if you can keep it semi-dry, like putting her in a sandy arena or something like that. Okay. And I'm not talking about you can't, like, after the sand, if you wanted to blast your feet with a hose to make sure no little pebbles snuck in where they yeah. don't belong, yeah. that would be fine. But just standing in it for any extended period of time, I think, is what's Okay, doing. I also have Or the Cavallo's on, maybe doing it all day was a bad idea. Yes. But, um... Yes, that's kind of the de tentative decision we've come see, to. See, the backs, they haven't been on the backs as long. It's not quite as mushy, but those front ones on both horses were just really mush. So if anything had gone wrong, yes. like recently, yes. you'd be in more trouble because the, the hoof doesn't have yes. the strength and, there. Yes, and can my camera zoom in on the back? You see that pink pinkness. We're not sure if that's dye from the socks or dye from the cavallos it's or rubbing, rubbing from the cavallos. Yeah, I was Definitely thinking it was the socks, so Brianna, but you've seen it. who deals with the horses every day in the mornings, is confident that it's from rubbing by the cavallos. 
that are have been on day or night for the last few it's, weeks. It's not where though. It it's just dye. It's just it's, dye. She has oh, I see. too. There's black on the front or purplish on yes. the front and on Sadie too. I've been watching it and I, and I and and noticing the patterns and it's definitely just dye from the cloth. Okay, so it's not that the hair is getting rubbed off or anything like that. Okay. All right. Well then, are she trimmed? And she's, done? she's trimmed. She's trimmed and done. So for today, how about Lawrence, if we walk her straight out here, down the middle of the driveway, you see how I have sand? Because yeah, we do are, use it. smaller gravel. That yes, as and much as uh, when rocks. we go across the street, there is a track of sand across the street. We can add some more. We have it stockpiled here at the front of the property. So let's see how she does. Just walking straight out this way, Brianna. Then stay in the middle of the driveway. And there is a sanded path. Oh, and Lawrence gets to watch her walk. There is a sanded path across, catty corner across to her pasture across the street. And we'll, we'll add some more sand. And uh, see from day to day how yeah, we're going to make this right. I think as long as you don't hit right. any of those big rocks, she'll be okay. Alton uh, said she was... This is the culprit she that could we're tell. worried she about. She thought she was already done with her day and then she was pebble. covering for another vet. So she went out piece of sand and says, that could get I don't think she gave it the old school try. In the soul. Mm. And then up, cause an abscess. I mean, resecting so the hoof all we're going to do what we can do to protect and yeah, right down the center. To give the hoof the opportunity to dry out daily. And the horse is sound right now, but you know, he's got this clod hopper on his... Well, as uh, part of Lawrence's visit, we come back to evaluate the zebus, my little miniature cattle. Susie, my heifer, was a little bit long last time, six weeks ago, and so we decided to trim her fronts. While Lawrence is doing it, and it's not too difficult as you can see, she's been trained to allow him to lift. I'm going to read to you something I got from my vet by email this morning. In answer to my question is, which was, how can I provide birth control for Susie? Because I have Sela, and I love Sela very, very much. Rusty's been hormonal these last few days. He's trying to mount Susie. I really am not ready for another calf. And if there was an easy way to prevent it from happening, other than separating them during the hormonal episodes or doing what my vet recommends, I would do so. And here's not what my vet necessarily recommends, but the options available to me from her point of view. She said, interesting question for Susie. And my question was, how can I provide Susie with birth control? My vet says, it depends how long you want to keep her out of heat. There's a product called all caps CIDR, which is essentially a vaginal pessary that releases progesterone, the same ingredient as the human birth control pill. It is used to synchronize the estrus cycle in dairy or beef cattle. CIDRs are put in all the cows, then removed seven days later, and the cows come into heat over the next 48 hours. However, if you left it in, I'm sure it would last longer than seven days for Susie. I just don't know how long, and it would be trial and error to figure it out. Theoretically, you would remove the old one and put a new one in just before the progesterone would run out in order to keep her out of heat. That could work, or it could be kind of a pain, but it's an easy short-term solution. Next paragraph. I also have a Medrozy progesterone injectable solution, which I use occasionally in horses to keep them out of heat. For example, in a mare during show season. One injection lasts about three weeks in a horse. Another thing which works in some horses is to place sterile marbles in the uterus. This seems to trick the horse into thinking that it's pregnant, so the heat cycles don't occur. It doesn't work in 100% of mares, but if it does, it's the easiest, least invasive, and least medicated solution. I don't know if it's been tried on cattle, but theoretically it would work. Last paragraph. If you're looking for a more permanent solution, then I recommend having her spayed. I've never done the procedure, but it's fairly common to spay feedback, feedlot beef heifers. The procedure is done standing with an instrument introduced vaginally that removed the ovaries only with a minimal trauma. 
I understand it's very safe and fast when done by an experienced person. You may be looking at a trip to Steinbeck or even to UC Davis to find somebody willing to do it on a mini Zebu. I don't have the necessary instrument and I wouldn't want my first try to be on Susie. So I just got this information this morning. It looks like Rusty is being less bullish this morning. I have a few days to consider my options and uh, unless it's too late, unless he's already impregnated her, I uh, may change my pattern during the next estrus cycle. Now Susie seems to be doing fine on her hoof trimming as you can see. We just have a lariat around her horns. It's a kid's lariat, very soft, very easy to put on. She's not freaking out at all. Uh, since Rusty's not bullish, we may or may not choose to trim him today if he needs it. Uh, we have a special trim station for him, which I've shown in past programs. Uh, the vertical piece of wood that you see ahead, I'll try to zoom in for you, has chains attached to it. And uh, we halter him up. We use cotton ropes to tie up his legs, the ones that we're trying to trim. And it's a rather an ordeal. And I've had prior programs on it, so you can probably find those programs by searching for programs about Rusty. And there's little Sela. Probably doesn't need trimming. Will let us lift her fronts pretty easily. We're working on getting her desensitized and willing to let us lift her backs. I've seen, okay. never seen a cow trim yeah. before, huh? No, I haven't. <laughs> okay, Lawrence, do you want to add anything? Did I say it right? She was easy? Yeah, that's the best she's ever been. Okay, good. She, she understands who is running the show there. <laughs> She's very willing now to let us do what we have like to do. She's never like rusty, not a handful, but you remember she used to get nervous and scoot away. Absolutely, yeah, but she got better. Mm -hmm. She's trusting. Uh, yesterday, Rusty was so hormonal, he wouldn't even let me take her fly mask off. He kept getting in the way. So uh, she's had it on all night, but that's okay. We used to keep the fly mask on all night. I didn't really look at Sela. I got a peek at him over the gate. He looks fine. <laughs> okay, fortunately, Rusty doesn't need it. Right now, maybe in six weeks from now, and Sela. Yeah, she's fine. She's fine too. That's all for today. Sonia Sokolo, the urban cowgirl. Okay, this is the next day. And you can see that Sadie is lifting her front feet very nicely. Ah, oh, a little bit of rocking there. Is that unusual, Brianna? No, this is what she usually does. She does rock back and forth. Um, I just did the other foot and she didn't rock back and forth at all on that one, um, which was the more sensitive one. She would not want to stand on this hoof usually. So um, I'm pretty pleased with that and I think she was maybe expecting some pain, which is why she walked back. As you can see, she's standing pretty still now. This is a, a great postscript for what we did yesterday. Okay, here is Firecrest Easter Eve. We just walked her to this tie post. She's walking okay. We're doing a little bit of grooming. You can see she's got weight on all fours. And my biggest concern, she's barefoot now and no cavallos, no socks, nothing. Oh, my biggest concern is are the bottom of her hooves drying out? And even more concern is that hole which my farrier um, kind of uh, scaled away at yesterday, is it clean inside? Because if not, if there are any pebbles, any grains of sand stuck in there, I'm concerned that uh, an abscess could develop. Okay, we are now cleaning out Eve's hooves. You can tell a lot by just watching what they do when you lift up one of the legs. And uh, she's licking her lips. Her, her back leg was cocked a few minutes ago. So, so far, so good. All right, now we have a hole in the front of her front hoof. Brianna looks to make sure there's no pebbles or sand in there. She can feel them. Brianna, you want to explain what you um, When you have a, a, a rock in a hole somewhere, um, you can generally tell because it feels like metal scraping against a rock. 
Uh, when you scrape against a hoof, it's soft. I mean, it's not like mushy soft, but it doesn't make a sound. It doesn't make any kind of scraping noise. But when you hit a pebble, it tends to be hard and you can really hear and feel a scraping noise with it. So um, I'm not feeling any of that in the holes or otherwise. Okay, and we check for that every day. Okay, next is the rear. Okay, here's the one that had the hole that we were concerned about. Yeah, she's showing a little bit of discomfort. I'm not sure from which foot. Uh, she is hopping around though. And my farrier said that he carved the hole out so that if anything goes in there, it should be able to fall out easily and not get stuck and abscessed. Again, just to review, we're not putting the cavallos on or hoof socks or the socks that I sew because we're trying to give the hooves a chance to dry out. And there's that hole right there. Um, actually, it's right, it's more like right here. It's actually less of a hole than anything else we've seen so far. Um, oh, because he trimmed away yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there's more of a hole in the front here now. Um, it's not a big hole. And again, just regular hook picking should keep any kind of rocks out. Right. Even uh, my farrier suggested if you're concerned, just take a hose, high pressure hose, and hose off the feet. Now, of course, you have to desensitize your horse or to that. Just a water bottle. Just a water bottle. bottle. Okay. That's what I use. I do a couple of spritzes. Yeah. Just to loosen up any dirt so I can see any rocks. I kind of pick it away. You see it's getting cleaner. And if I smell a smell or see any black, which I smell a little bit of a smell right now, I use this Robic mix of root killer and water and just spray a little bit, brush the hoof again, and then rinse it off to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. And then the horses walk around this dirt and sand so their hooves get pretty much dried out before they get anywhere. Okay, and Robic is spelled R-O-E-B-I-C. It's actually a root killer, but it, uh, especially in cattle and also now in horses, it's a good way to keep um, rot from developing in a horse and cow hooves. Well, that's our follow-up. I hope you learned something. Please email me info at urbancowgirlchannel.com if you have any questions. Our cast of characters, Sadie and Eve. Sammy. Rusty and Susie. Heifer calf, Sela. For more information, www.cowgirlchannel.com.